Hi friends, hope you're all doing good today. Um, I'm Venkat. Um, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install and configure iSCSI on CentOS 7. So let's play with iSCSI. So what I've got here is I'm using KVM um, for my virtual machine. So I've got um, five virtual machines. I'm going to be playing with the first three ones, SendVML 1, 02 and 03. So in this video, I'm going to be using SendVML 1 as my iSCSI target server. So I've already added a um, couple of hard disks, I think. Now it's just one hard disk to SendVML 1, which I'm going to make it as an iSCSI target. And from SendVML 2 and SendVML 3, I'm going to be connecting to that iSCSI target. So I'm using Tmux here and I'm going to use um, start multiple tabs one per virtual machine. So let's rename this to SendVMO1 and create another one. Rename it to SendVMO2. Create another one and rename it to SendVMO3. And here we go. So let's log into the server. Okay, if you look at my LS block output, so this is the hard disk that I have added. Um, it's a 2 gig hard disk. So let's partition this hard disk um, into two partitions and we will set up LVM on one partition and use the other partition directly as an iSCSI target. Okay print nothing here so create a new partition primary default and let's make it one gig big okay p that's done create a second partition default 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 use all the disk space cool print um, before we do that, we need to change the partition type um, for one of the partition to use LVM. Um, yeah, VDB2 should be fine. And it's 8E, and if you're not sure, you can type EL to list it. Um, whereas 8E, Linux, LVM. So let's make it a LVM partition. Cool, write it. You don't have to do part pro, but it's always good to do it. Cool. Now if you look at the LS block outputs, you've got two partitions. VDB1 and VDB2. So I'm going to be creating a, a logical volume on VDB2. Let's create a volume group. Give it a name. Okay. No logical volume. Create. I'm going to use the entire space. And logical volume name is going to be LV underscore jungle. Don't ask me why I chose the name jungle because I like the word jungle in English. And which volume group you're going to be using? It's VG underscore jungle. Cool. Do LBS logical volume scan and it will list you. You've got a 1 gig logical volume. So we have got an LVM partition and a, a basic default partition. So we're going to be using these two as an iSCSI target. So we need to be installing target CLI package. Okay, um, this would have created um, um, system CTL service unit. Uh, 
um, that will actually list everything. Let's do this way. Yep, don't get that service is disabled. Let's enable it. Cool, that's done. And let's get into the target CLI prompt by typing target CLI. Cool. If you do ls, <coughs> um, it's pretty empty at the moment. So you're gonna be creating um, a backstore, which are the iSCSI targets. So cd to backstores and to block devices. Um, create. Um, you need to give it a name. So let's call it. Um, this one and let's use dev vdb1 that's created and um, let's create another target disk2 which is our yeah that's the one only if you do ls now you've got two disks created one is a plain partition the other one is an LVM um, let's go into iSCSI we need to create an IQN nothing in here now so you need to create a target here so the naming convention is like this IQN dot year followed by a month and your domain name in reverse order by the way, this is my domain name, and um, let's call it SendVMO1. So this has created a target portal group, but if you do ls now, you can see a whole bunch of things that has populated. And now we need to create access control list. Go into IQN, target portal group, ACLs, and now you create um, access control lists. Create iqn dot okay cool so basically when you're configuring your client your client needs to uh, <coughs> you need to set up configure your client with this name otherwise you won't be able to access this target uh, we need to create LUNS. CD into LUNS. Create. Um, backstore block device 1 that has created. Uh, it, that it actually mapped to the um, access control list that we have created in the previous step. Let's do it for the second disk. Yep, I think that's pretty much. Uh, it appears that in the recent version of target CLI. Um, this portal gets created automatically, it listens on all interface on port 3260. In previous versions of um, Target, uh, you have to be creating this portals uh, manually. So that's done, let's go back and do an ls. So that's all you need, and if you exit out of it, it will write the configuration back to the disk. That's done, and let's start the service. That's running, and if you do netstat, I think I probably won't have netstat because it's a minimal installation. Let's do netstat. Yes. No, it's not netstat. It's net tools package that provides netstat. Yep, you could see three two six zero. So you need to open this port on the firewall. We've got it, and that's all we need to do on the server side. And let's go to the client. Log into the um, client machine. On the client, the package we are interested in is 
iSCSI um, initiator utils. This might have created um, some system D units, and so let's check what it has created. Okay, so we are interested in these two services. iSCSI service is enabled by default, so we don't have to worry about it. We need to enable and start iSCSI D service. And before doing that, there's one thing you need to do. Um, you need to edit iSCSI initiator name. So this is where you set the name of the um, client. Otherwise, you won't be able to access the target. 2015. There are six. And let's enable the service. That's done. And if you do ls block, I don't have anything except the um, the base disk VDA. So. At this point, um, we need to do a discovery to see what targets are available. There's a tool called iSCSI ADM. Yep. Minus M discovery. So we are um, using the discovery mode to find what targets are available for us. Type send targets. Portal. Which portal? Um, send VMO1, that's my server. and on 3260 port. Um, I've got DNS set up on my Raspberry Pi so I'm using SendVMO1 otherwise you could use um, the IP address here. Okay cool it has come up with the um, target that it's um, serving SendVMO1 so now we can log in to this target and access the disk. Let's go see ADM and mode this time is going to be nodes minus uppercase T for target so this is going to be our target and portal is sendvm01 colon 3260 I don't think port 3260 is really necessary to be specified here um, because that's the default port unless you have changed the um, port to something else I don't think you need to specify it here but there's nothing wrong in specifying it and the final option is minus the L to login yep that's done successful and what it has actually done is if you look at the ls block output now you could see sd uh, sorry sda and sdb it has added two disks um, now uh, if you remember sda the one gig disk is the default partition that we created on sendvmo1 and sdb is an lvm partition you can also use a file on the server to be used as an iSCSI target and you can use it here and if you search in dmessage probably the last few entries will show you that the disk has been added and it will also appear on the messages file disk attached disk attached so we can do anything we want with this disk. So let's do um, uh, let's create some physical volumes, volume group, and logical volumes out of these disks. So what I'm going to do? Maybe create slash yeah, SDA created. Let's create a volume group. Give it a name. Um, PD underscore KVM. Use all remaining space up. Give it a name. And let's use VD underscore KVM as our volume group. LVS. Yes, we've got a new partition now. <laughs> and let's create another one. So it's just, uh, just wanted to show you how to do that. So I'm not going to be 
looking at creating any partitions on STB and LS block. So we have got the STB L. Ah, uh, yeah, SDA. It's here. And if you want to do an auto mount on start up, you need to um, edit Etsy FS tab and add a line that says Dell Mapper Volume Group Iphone Logical Volume KVM. Right, we're gonna mount it. Let's say Data. And the partition is XFS. Oh, we missed a step. We need to create an um, XFS file system on that partition. Let's go with defaults and let's add this option. This option <coughs> is useful because we don't want this um, disk to be um, holding up our boot process. So. It should actually take it, but I don't know how it behaves in CentOS 7, but it's... I've tested it, it used to work fine. And we need to create stair directory and let's create an XFS file system on Dell Mapper VG. That's done. <coughs> Um, we haven't actually mounted it so it won't show up here and if you do mount minus a cool df minus hatch it's here the one git partition that we created so anytime if you um, boot your machine it will automatically uh, mount this partition but you need to make sure the server sendvmo1 comes up before sendvmo2 otherwise that's going to be a problem Yep, we got it running. So if you go back to the um, the server sent me ML1, no? Did I exit? Oh, I'm creating new sessions. Okay, in here, what I was about to tell you. Uh, this is the first time I'm making a video on YouTube. I don't keep track of what I'm doing. Um, okay, target CLI. Yeah, let's. What you can do here is, I initially thought of um, using my third VM, send VM03, and create an additional um, uh, IQ and ACL, and then um, use a file-based um, target, and then see if you can access um, uh, the targets from send VM02 and send VM03, depending on what IQ and names you give on the um, iSCSI initiator name. So depending on the name you give and depending on the um, ACLs you configure here, you will be controlled um, to which uh, target you can connect to. Quit out of it. Now, exit. I quite get confused with uh, quit and exit. It's not a problem here. So I think that's pretty much I wanted to show you guys. I haven't actually used um, the third VM. Okay, cool. Okay, that's pretty much. Thanks for watching. And if you like the video, please subscribe. I don't have lots of videos as of now, so there's no point in subscribing. But if you could share your thoughts and share your feedback, that would be great. Uh, as I'm preparing for my RHC, I've done RHCSA a couple months ago. Um, I'm planning to do RHC uh, in RHEL 7. So basically, this helps me get comfortable with the concepts. Thanks for watching. Bye.